Yo, ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? It's your boy, Purple Slushy, bringing you guys another Sage guide. In today's guide, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do the PVE combo correctly and efficiently. In yesterday's guide, I told you guys that once I figure it out, I will be bringing you guys an update, and today's video is going to be the update. So first off, we're just gonna go into the skills of what skills you wanna start out with when you use, how you use the rotation, then I will show you guys how to actually use the skills on the dummy. We're gonna go over the skills and what they do and why you use them um, in the order that you do. Third, we are going to be going over the add-ons for the class for PVE. And then I'm gonna show me grinding a higher end grind zone and I'll show you guys kinda how you kite and use your abilities when you are fighting really uh, strong mobs. Because Sage is super squishy, it's more squishy than Sork. So you don't want to just face tank the mobs, you're going to want to have to kind of kite around them. If you have higher DP, you can kind of face tank, but on Sage, it's pretty squishy. So you just want to watch yourself when you're grinding and make sure you stay protected the whole time. If you guys want to see other class guides, I got full class guides up on my website, bdohq.com. We got Tamer, Warrior, Sorceress. Kuno, Berserker up there right now. We will be adding more in the future. There's also a beginner guide and other things, other dope content creators that you can go and follow that are all amazing at their class. Also, I'm doing a giveaway at the end of this month. Make sure you guys leave a comment and subscribe in my Red Orcs grinding guide. I will leave it in the comment section down, or not in the comment section, in the description box down below. And then if you comment on there, you will be entered to win the giveaway. I'm doing two $50 gift card giveaways to two random subscribers. So if you comment there, good luck. And let's get into the guide. Okay, so the rotation that you're gonna wanna do is pretty simple, but it can be a little bit complicated if you are newer to classes that have animation cancels, but with a little bit of effort and trial and error, you guys will be a pro in no time. So starting out the combo, the first skill that you're going to want to use is Prime Ator's Energy. This is a super arm armor. Although it doesn't provide you any major debuffs, it does provide you with amazing skill add-on buffs. If you can see down below, right at the bottom of the skill description, it says skill add-on. Prime Ator's Energy allows you to have tier 3 add-ons. So skills like a Prime uh, Ator's Energy allow you to um, get really good buffs right off the bat. So this is why we're gonna use this skill first in the rotation. It's gonna give you extra damage to monsters plus 30, and then it's gonna give you critical hit rate plus 30, which is gonna make you hit really hard. Right after Primator's energy, we are going to go straight into um, this move right here called Spatial Collapse, or I, I mean Spatula Collapse. So what Spatula Collapse does is it's also a forward guard. You're gonna want to use this and then you're gonna want to iframe with it and then cast it, iframe again and cast it. It is a really good move. It applies a minus 20 DP buff. Then I also have a minus 15 DP buff on top of that, which is going to help you a lot while you're grinding. So after we get those two buffs on the mobs, one from Spatula and one from Ator's, we are going to go into Ator's Mark. What Prime Ator's Mark does is this skill is amazing. It is going to be an all evasion rate minus 18% on the enemy. Then we got an extra 4% for the skill add-on on top of that. And then we're also gonna get plus 15 defense on this as having defense is really, really important on Sage because you are super, super squishy. So you're gonna wanna make sure you keep your health pots up, you keep them uh, droughts up, and you just watch your iframes, watch your back. After Prime Ator's Mark, we are going to go into Form Shift. Form Shift is a really, really nice skill. What Form Shift is gonna do, is gonna allow us to do a little zoop zoop, and we're gonna go through the enemy, back through the enemy, applying a lot of damage. It has really high damage modifiers, and it is a super armor, so you're gonna be able to stay decently protected and not get CC'd. When you're lower health, I wouldn't recommend using this into the mobs if you're at a really high end zone, um, like Red Orcs or Ash Forest, as you will get clapped. Then right after Prime Form Shift, um, the next skill that you're going to want to do if the mobs aren't dead yet is Spatial Fissure or Spatula Fissure. So Spatula Fissure is a really good skill. Shift left mouse button and it's going to do a lot of damage. I only have it level two, 
but it has really high damage modifiers and it's gonna re recover you a little bit of MP, which is really nice. And then if they're not dead after that, you can end it off with Void Gateways. Void Gateways is a really hard hitting skill. Its hit damage is 1218% times 10, which is insane, 100% critical hit rate. So this will definitely finish off the enemies. Now, one more thing that you could add in into the rotation at the beginning is Realm of Anguish. Realm of Anguish is minus DP on the enemies and Realm of Anguish um, just does a decent amount of damage when it's super leveled up. I don't have enough skill points for it yet, but eventually we will get it. So let me show you the rotation on this mob and then I will go show you guys a picture of the skill add-ons. And then after that, I will show you guys me grinding a little bit and then we'll go over them. So, what you want to do when you start off is you're going to want to use a Tor's energy. So S plus left uh, S plus left mouse button. So just like that. Then you're going to want to go into S plus F for spatula. And then after you do that, you're going to want to go into S E for a Tor's mark. After you go into a Tor's mark, form shift. Once you got the form shift on the mobs, then you can go into spatula fissure, which is shift and left mouse button like that. And then you wanna F one more time to um, use this skill at the end, a Tor's Fist. So this skill is going to um, add a decent amount of extra damage. And then after that, you can go in to shift right mouse button. So all together real quick, it's gonna look something like this. And then in PvE, the mobs won't get pushed back like that, so you'll be able to do a lot of damage. Now, when you're fighting a group of mobs, um, especially at higher end grind zones, you're not gonna be able to face tank like that. So in order to do the skills, you're gonna have to do something along the lines of this. So a Tor's energy, then you're gonna wanna iframe into spatula, iframe again, <clears throat> let it go off, iframe again, a Tor's mark, then you can go in and you can form shift and then spatula fizzer. And then after that, you can just do shift right mouse button and you're good to go. I forgot to throw in a Tor's um, fist again. Just make sure after you do spatula fissure that you use it. So, whoops. So after you do this move right here, it is shift and left mouse button press F again and you'll use the fist. So I'm gonna do a couple rotations on these mobs. Now this time I'm actually going to throw on the AOE, which is Realm of Anguish. And then this is what the full rotation is gonna look like. Keep it going if they're not dead yet. Just redo what you did before. And it's as simple as that. One thing that is really, really important that you guys are going to want to do on your stage that is probably the most OP thing out of any class is being able to reset your e-buff. So you can use your e-buff and then this skill right here, reset, allows you to reset your e-buff every 10 minutes. So you can e-buff, use it, wait 30 seconds, then reset and use your e-buff again. So basically you have double the amount of e-buffs every hour um, than any other class in the game, which is super strong. So right here, I will show you guys what I mean. So we will e-buff, we'll apply our our buffs, we got the AOE down, just little boom, little bang, bop, then towards mark, form shift, F, do this, so we got six seconds on it, so 
I'm gonna redo it. So right here, we're gonna hit the reset and then we're gonna go back into our e-buff again. And then same thing, keep it going. That. And you'll be good to go. So now let's go and check out the add-ons. All right, boys, so for the add-ons, it's pretty simple, short and sweet. Spatial collapse, or spatula as I like to call it, I'm doing it for the memes, because you guys on my first video seemed to all notice the way that I said spatial. It was five in the morning and I had been up already for like 20 hours, but from now on, it's just gonna be spatula. So spatula collapse, we gotta get the plus 4% evasion, all DP minus 15. A Taurus Thorn, this is just a filler move. Um, you don't really have to use this if you don't want to. Crit hit rate plus 10% and attack casting speed. Sometimes I use this to pull mobs together, so it's just nice to get that critical hit rate um, right off the bat. Then a Taurus Mark, get the evasion, uh, minus 4% that's gonna stack, plus all DP, defense to keep you um, more tanky. A Taurus Energy, extra damage to monsters, plus 30 for seven seconds. Critical hit rate, plus 30% for seven seconds. This is gonna give you that big buff right at the beginning of your pull that's gonna help out a lot. This skill right here, we are that is the flow to a Taurus Energy, plus 4% accuracy, attack casting speed, plus 7%. Then Gravity Rift, um, you can use this move uh, if you need the extra attack casting speed um, buff just for filler if this one from a Taurus Energy falls off. This is just a good way to get a nice little quick buff. It's just shift E real fast. And also I get movement speed plus 7% just so I can move around a little bit faster. So that pretty much wraps it up for the add-ons and the skills. Now let's get into me actually using the class and fighting with it at a grind spot. And then after that, I'm just gonna let it play out and I'll see you guys there. All right, so getting into the grind on the Sage, it is pretty nice. You just gotta make sure that you stay protected the whole time. So going into this pack, as you notice, as I'm doing abilities, when I um, go to cast it, I cast it and then immediately when I want to um, uh, release it I always iframe before it unless I know that I'll be able to get out like there I knew I was able to get out so I go ahead and I move pretty quick but here we're gonna start with a Taurus energy and then we go into um, shift left mouse button because SF was on cooldown so here we go SF then teleport into SE then we go into Taurus energy again for the right mouse button just to get the extra AoE damage into form shift then S left mouse button and you pretty much just want to use all your skills when they're off cooldown. Um, it's okay if you don't get the rotation perfect because sometimes your skills will be on cooldown. So just make sure that you try to um, get all the important skills off first. So there we got a Taurus Energy and then we backed up, went into SE real quick. And then here we are going to do um, S right mouse button. I just did that. I don't think I meant to do that there. Um, I should have went into SF first for the DPD buff but we're gonna go into Taurus Energy here, then we go into the SF. Then here, we're gonna go into the F after the teleport, and then we go into the SE. Right there, shift right mouse button, and then form shift through the mobs. We're gonna back up, SE again, SF, form shift through the mobs. Sometimes you won't be able to get SF off before you get SE off just for the fact that it's still on cooldown, so it's okay if you, uh, do them backwards. They both apply good buffs. The one applies SE applies your evasion rate debuff and your SF applies a DP debuff. So it doesn't really matter what the order you do those two in. But I always do SF first because I think the DP makes it so you hit them a little bit harder. So you just want to make sure that while you're here and you're moving around these mobs that you're not doing anything that is going to get you killed. Because if I were to just face tank these mobs and try to just kill them straight up, I will probably most likely die. I actually did die a couple times um, when I was first trying here on um, my Sage because it's really easy to get stuck in between the mobs 
And the crappy thing about Sage that I wish it had is Stam Regen on Q block. So sometimes when you're completely out of Stam and you're in the middle of a mob pack, you can't get out because your iframe is on collision and when you have no Stam, you can't iframe anyways. And all you can do is block. So when your frontal guard runs out, you're just sitting there getting st like stumbled over and over and over again. And you can't go anywhere, you can't do anything. Um, if you try to use any moves, you're most likely gonna die. Like if you try to use a towards energy when you're real low health, when you're stuck inside mobs, you're gonna die. So I died like twice getting stuck in between mobs. So make sure you're always watching your stand bar. You don't wanna get yourself into a situation where you don't have any stand to get um, between the mobs. Hopefully at some point they add stam uh, regen on Q because every other class as a Q block gets stam back while they're in Q. So I don't know why Sage wouldn't, but that's the one thing that it is lacking right now. Um, besides that, the class hits extremely hard. So if you guys want to use uh, your Sage, just make sure you have on church buffs. It's pretty important to get that extra DP buff and then make sure that you're just using your skills protected. I'm running a um, Frenzy Drought, and then I also got a Spirit Perfume Elixir, and I'm also running Health Pots. I normally don't run Health Pots on my Sork, but on my Sage, I definitely needed to because I was getting hit pretty hard. But as you can see, Sage grinds pretty fast. Um, I'd say it's as good, um, maybe a little less efficient or a little more efficient, I can't tell than my sword, but they're pretty on par with each other. You just gotta make sure that when you're doing your rotation, you're really taking into account everything that's going on and you're making sure you're using your DP debuffs and all your different debuffs when you need to. But I hope this was able to help you guys out in PVE and become a little bit more uh, efficient in PVE and actually understand how to grind when you're in PVE. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I'm just gonna let the grind play out for a few more minutes. But until next time, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. It's been your boy, Purple Slushy. Peace.